I'm in a stairwell. I'm in a stairwell. I'm just on a quick 10 minute break at work, so I gotta do this quick. Bro, where's my. Oh, are you kidding me, bro? So, to express gratitude for the people who helped me raise $200 last month for November. I need to give my mustache some screen time before I shave him away. Scraggly old boy. <laughs> and also just to keep the November momentum going because, you know, mental health is a struggle every day. So many people around the world. Three quick, not as known as they should be, tips on how to care for your loved ones through a mental illness. The first one is just, just learn everything you can about what they're going through. And this one, it like seems like a no brainer, but a lot of people just don't do it. And because people hate reading. If you have a loved one with mental illness, there are thoughts going on in their brain, you know, things flooding their consciousness that you have no context for. You know, you do not understand. I see you, make that face, stop. It's bad, bad you. No, no, you don't understand. You're ignorant about it, baby, and that's okay. You know, the, the word ignorance just has such a negative connotation, but it's really just not knowing. And there's plenty of things that I don't know that we all don't know. There's plenty of things that we're ignorant about. But how could you possibly be of any comfort or support to your loved one if you are completely ignorant of their experiences? You know, read what you can, watch what you can, have the conversations to just, you know, cultivate, develop that awareness of what they're going through, you know, emotionally, spiritually, physically, everythingly. And also, you know, how do these things manifest in your loved one in particular, this individual? Because of course that's different, you know, everything doesn't always look the same. Is it like, oh, they're gonna get quiet and try to go for a walk? Is that signaling something more ominous? Is it them, you know, exploding over bananas? You know, what do they do? So the more you train yourself to see things the way that they are, the more you can control yourself in intense situations, you know, and just stay calm so you can give that help, that support, that safety, that your loved one really needs. The second thing is just, I think, to realize that so many of their actions are out of their control. You know, because one of the most dangerous but common misconceptions around mental illness is just like that it's a, a willpower issue. Oh, they can just will themselves into, you know, being more positive. Oh, you know, they're just not strong enough. We'll help them to be stronger, you know, more resilient. So here's a crazy thought. Nobody wants to feel hopeless, to be overcome with sadness, to be crippled by anxiety. You know, these are things that happen to people. Like here's a little thought experiment, right? Let's say you, you're in a room and a TV turns on in your periphery. You know, you notice the TV turned on. Maybe you even look like, oh, the TV turned on. Did you choose to notice or to even to look at the TV turning on? No. Our brain is constantly doing things and processing things and we are really only aware of a small little percentage of it. And so these extreme emotions are kind of the same thing on a much more, a much higher stakes scale. It's like the brain is doing things and the person is kind of trapped inside, kind of helpless, you know, aware of what's happening, but unable to really do anything to affect it or to change it, which can kind of just add to those feelings of hopelessness, you know, which all the more reinforces, you know, why they need that support, compassion, understanding from, you know, the people in their lives. The third thing, you know, just really be careful of treating them like a case study, you know, treating them like their, you know, situation, their condition defines them. You know, while yes, it is important to acknowledge that these are medically legitimate illnesses that do come down to more than just willpower, I think it's equally, if not more so important to not treat your loved one like some kind of lab rat. Oh, well, you have this, so just do this and this and uh, you'll be all right. <laughs> Sayonara! Don't do that. Don't do that. You want to just make them feel like a human being, you know, with feelings, with emotions, you know, that they're not alone. They are not their illness. It's just something they are forced to experience. You know, but before anything else, you know, that's still your husband, that's still your sister, that's still your best friend. Love, patience, kindness. Cannot be overstated. Cannot be overemphasized. You know, not blaming your loved one for, or making them feel guilty for things that are beyond their control. And look, I'm not, you know, perfect with all this stuff. I struggle, you know, and, I, and there's moments where I, I just look back and I, I just really wish I had done something differently or I had said something differently. Hindsight is 2020, but this is the work, you know, this is the work. These are the things to be thinking of, developing to, you know, be more understanding, be more loving, and just give that support, you know, that's, that's really going to, to help your loved one out in the times when they need it most. So get out there, you know, get out there, be gentle with yourself, be gentle with your loved one, and let's all work towards long lives of contentment and peace. May God be with ye.
God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. May God be with you. Oh. oh shit. Still recording? Okay. That's fine. That's fine. See the microphone. See the microphone.